Here in camp, just like in town, there are spots where performance is notably worse, even with reduced settings. And so, my aim here is to just try and find where we can average about 60 FPS in most instances or better. And as we exit the camp, our frame rate jumps up to around 60, maybe just a little above. Let's head out into the field for a moment. Now we're up into the upper 60s. Not too bad. Nice steady 60 FPS out here in the field. down into the upper 50s. Now, if we take all of our settings and basically move them all to high, except texture quality, let's leave that on ultra. We've got everything else on high. Let's turn, let's leave decal quality on high. Ultra, I mean, excuse me. Dipped to 59 for just a moment and we're up in the mid 60s still. Not too bad, and the game still looks really good. Uh, not quite as many volumetric effects, not quite as many sun shafts and whatnot, but the game still looks really good. Better than console, I would say, except for the resolution, of course. But I'd play it like this. All right, we're gonna jump over to 1440p and check out what happens with performance there. We'll start with these settings and we'll bump them down as needed to get a decent 60 FPS experience. All right, here we are at 1440p, the same settings we were using at 1080p. Everything on high, except for texture quality and uh, decal. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stupid autosave. All right. Image looks more crisp, which I really appreciate. Keep TAA on for now because it will still help clean up some of those shimmering jaggies. But as you can see, now frame rates are dipping into the 40s in this hotspot in camp. Not a lot that I can do about it. I've tried optimizing, and even on my 3080 Ti, I have the same problem. Big dips. Not as bad, of course, because it's a 3080 Ti, but still, big dips. All right, let's get out of here and get into that field. Giddy up. Come on now. Yeah. Daggone badger. Alright, so we're still in the 50s. So let's go ahead and bump some settings down. Let's start with mirror, reflection. Leave SSAO on high for now. Far shadow quality on medium. Global illumination on medium. 
tessellation quality, we'll bump it down to medium. Let's see. Particle lighting quality on medium, soft shadows medium, grass shadows medium, volumetric lighting medium. Mid to upper 50s, a little bit better. Game still looks pretty decent. Shadows aren't quite as, uh, as robust, but it still looks pretty good. But we're still not quite hitting a 60 FPS mark, so let's turn down some more settings. Turn down for what? Let's see, fur quality medium. We'll turn decals down to high, though it won't make a big difference. Occlusion mapping to medium. Tree quality medium. Water refraction and reflections on medium. All volumetrics on medium. Just barely skimming 60 FPS. Oh, I missed it. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, he's coming back. He's coming back. Oh, he ran off. Dang it. Never mind. All right. 59. 58. Not too bad. If I weren't recording, I think this would be a solid 60. We'd get that extra one to two frames per second. So I think this is a pretty good compromise on settings and image quality and the game still looks pretty good I would say that this is comparable to console seventy one FPS that's pretty good nice all right, so here we are at 4K with the same settings we were using at 1440p as our starting point. Boom. Graphics. All right, 4K. Oh, let's change that to full screen. There we go. All right, 4K full screen. Same settings we were using at 1440p. We're definitely going to have to turn some stuff down here. All right, so let's see. Going to leave anISO at 16. We'll turn textures down to high. Lighting medium. Shadows medium. SSAO medium. We're just going to start with everything on medium to see how performance is. We're going to turn TAA off. All right. Everything else is on medium. Except for decals, we'll leave that on medium too. Why not? Whew, that did not help much. Looking at mid 30s up to the low 40s, so not, not great. Image looks pretty crisp though, I like it. Pretty hard to beat 4K. All right, let's ride out of camp a little bit and then we'll see what settings we need to adjust to get a kind of steady 60 FPS. We'll probably have to turn settings down to low, to be honest. And even then, we may not reach it, so DLSS may be in the cards. We'll see. All right, 40, 41. Up to 47, it's not too bad. It's not great, but that's better. All right, let's adjust. Let's just bump everything down to low. Let's leave SSAO on medium though. I'd like to have it on instead of off.
Soft shadows on medium to start with. Grass shadows low. Leave long shadows on. Trees on low. Ugh. I guess high and medium are all we get for fur, so we'll leave it on medium and decals on medium. <laughs> we gained two FPS. Woo! 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 Ow! Not great. Definitely not a VRAM limitation. We've got 12 gigabytes on this card. This card just isn't quite powerful enough for 4K in most modern games. That's just how it is. Right around for a second just to see. Yep, there's not much else that we can do outside of turning on DLSS, so that's what we're gonna do. All right, let's turn on DLSS. We'll leave it on quality to start with. Get that nice quality. That did not help much. That's weird. All right, let's try balanced. That didn't help too much either. <laughs> but we're closer to 1440p performance, but with reduced settings. The image does look sharper than at 1440. All right, loaded so we could have some more daylight, but we're still using DLSS unbalanced. The sharpening doesn't look too bad. Looks better than 1440p, to be honest, but we're still not hitting 60 FPS. So, let's bump down DLSS one more setting. Performance it is. I can definitely tell that there's extra sharpening going on here, but I think outside of camp we might just hit 60. All right, 55 as we're leaving camp. And again, this still looks sharper than 1440p, and we don't have all that shimmering going on. So not having TAA on still looks better. All right, 61, 62. 59, not bad. We finally hit 60 with 4K. Now to be fair, we don't have all the extra settings turned up, and so the overall image quality may not be quite as nice as at 1080p and 1440p. But if you really want to play 4K with this 3060, DLSS is an option. It still looks pretty crisp. Nice and clear image. You still have a lot of the, uh, the wonderful sky imagery. The trees look pretty good. It's not perfect, but if I didn't know any better, I would still say this looks great. But what about ultra performance? Yep, ultra performance is the minimum. All right. Just so we tested them all. So no one can say, but you didn't try ultra. You didn't try ultra performance. <laughs> to be fair though, a lot of these settings are on ultra and high. Does look good though. With settings like this, it's a little bit harder to tell that there's a bit of over, uh, over sharpening going on because of the uh, muddied textures from the reduced DLSS resolution. But, it's not worse than 1080p as far as quality. 
So there's that. Let's try textures on high. Turn everything else down to high. Turn water quality to medium. Tessellation to medium. Soft shadows high. Tree quality high, parallax high. All right, let's see what happens. Fifty FPS, ooh, sixty. Not too bad. All right, I'm gonna load from the campsite to see what performance is like in the daytime. So BRB. All right, looking at mid to upper fifties. Forty-eight, forty-nine. So similar to previously, but with better settings. Personally, I wouldn't prefer to play with ultra performance DLSS or even performance, but if you want to play at 4K on this card with some increased settings on like high or even turning them down to medium, this is definitely an option. It looks pretty good. A little bit sharper than 1080p, the native 1080p. So I can definitely see the value in it. However, my recommendation for this 3060 is to stick to 1080p and 1440p gameplay. 4K is possible, but you have to make a lot of sacrifices to make it happen. That's not to say that uh, I'm unimpressed with this card. I'm very impressed with what it's capable of. A 60 level card, a base level 60 level card, is holding its own and all the major resolutions with pretty good settings in a very demanding game. Now I haven't gotten too far into this game and performance in certain areas may be better or worse. I may do an update when I get further into this game just to show that uh, I can see what performance is like, give you all an idea, but I can tell that this is a game that's one of those very long play games and so I wanted to get this video out in case anybody's wondering how this game performs on the 3060. I have had questions, so here's a look at least. Thank you everybody for watching, I really appreciate it. I realize that this format is different than what I usually put out for a performance video for a specific card or in a specific game, but with the way that the save and load system works in this game, I found it really hard to match up scene for scene. Uh, performance. So if you found this useful, hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Click that subscribe. Tell me what else you'd like to see down below, whether it be in Red Dead Redemption 2 or another game, and I will see what I can do. If you're new here, consider following me over on Twitter at hardly underscore tech. If you'd like to help support the channel directly, consider becoming a Patreon member. Link is on the main page here on YouTube, or you can search for hardly tech over on Patreon. There are some benefits. If you're interested, check it out. And if you got some extra time, go check out my secondary channel called Hardly Games. Go figure, right? <laughs> I'll be uploading clips there fairly regularly based on whatever game I'm playing currently. And right now I'm playing GT7 a bunch, so check it out. I've got a couple clips up now, and I'll be uploading pretty regularly. And again, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you all on the next video. Bye.